Hey, yo, everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Suicide Squad, issues 1, 2, and 3, a look at the series thus far. Take a look at this comic covers right here. Now, the reason why I picked up Suicide Squad is because I got my YouTube check, and I had a little bit of extra money on hand. Most of that check is going to be going towards Christmas shopping. However, I did want to pick up Suicide Squad and give it a chance because, well, I'm interested in the team and if I like it, I might continue picking it up. However, if I like it and I want to continue picking it up, it might mean I might need to drop another title. We'll have to see about that later on. Let's focus more or less on Suicide Squad and whether or not it's a good series. Now, I want to say before going into this review is that I'm one of the four or five people that are hardcore comic book fans, particularly with DC Comics, who have not read Secret Six. I know it's a fantastic series, and people have nothing but good to say about it, and I did plan on getting into it. However, the relaunch happened, and then I started to get focused on the relaunch, and there was just a lot of stuff on my plate. So... I have not read Secret Six, so I have no way of comparing this to Secret Six. Which is probably a good thing, because I'm going in this with really no expectations. No high or low expectations, I'm just going into this. I might as well also tell you guys what the main draw for this comic is for me. Now, there's two main draws for the reason why I'm picking up this comic. First draw is that it is a plain, flat, and simple bad guy comic. And they are working for the government, but hey, they're bad guys and they're doing bad guys things, which I'm cool with. And they're kind of a bunch of misfits. They're not like they're an organized, well-oiled team that are uniformed. No, they're a bunch of random villains put together. Second draw for this, for me, is Deadshot. I think Deadshot is awesome. In the grand scheme of mercenaries in the DC Universe, Deathstroke Determinator is at the top. After him is David Kane, but right under him is Deathstroke on the characters that I like that are mercenaries. I like Deadshot. He's cool, he's unique, and he's just badass. So those are the main draws for me for this comic. The basic story for issues number one through three is that these individual villains, and there is a big group for this Suicide Squad. Don't worry, a lot of them get killed off in the first three issues. Um, but... The basic concept is they're captured by the government and little bombs are put in their head. And the government said, work for us and we won't blow you up. Hey, options! Anyways, Destro, uh, Deathstroke, yeah, Deathstroke would not be captured by the government. But Deadshot is put in control of this group, of this misfit groups, and it consists of people like Deadshot, King Shark, uh, Harley Quinn, which are the ones that advertise the most, but also other characters like El Diablo, who is an interesting character that I really like, and a few others who names I really don't care about, because, well, to be honest, they're gonna die. Captain Boomerang does show up at the end of issue 3, too. Anyways, they are employed by the government against their will to do the government's bidding, particularly under Amanda Waller, who has lost a lot of weight. Yes, I... Don't like that. I'd rather Amanda Waller be big and powerful and intimidating because that's what made Amanda Waller so great is that she was a force to be with, uh, reckoned with. She was the wall. Anyways, uh, so their first mission, if they choose to accept it, guess what happened if they don't? Anyways, their first mission is they have to go into a football stadium and quarantine it and find a package. See, the people in this football stadiums are becoming mechanized zombies. It sounds silly, but it actually works out for the comic. And the Suicide Squad have to go in, get this package, which is the only cure, and quarantine as much as they can. Although, not everything goes the way they want it to, and, well, stuff starts to happen. Bad stuff to so the Suicide Squad. So, uh, with their members dropping like flies, will the Suicide Squad be able to get the package, get out, and get back to the government before the bombs in their head blow up? Or will they unfortunately fail and die? Well, I can guarantee you one thing, a lot of them will die. Yeah, there is a few members that get killed off. I've been saying that throughout this review. It's not a spoiler, because at the end of each issue, they say, Another member will die! I can guarantee you Harley Quinn, King Shark, and Deadshot aren't going to be them, because they're kind of the cover characters. So let's get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. 
good. Uh, the series is fun. It has a nice tone to it. It has a bit of comedy in it, a bit. Um, and most of it's coming from Harley Quinn and King Shark. Um, although King Shark has some of the best one-liners in this. Let me give a quick example. For example, there's a bad guy pursuing another bad guy, pursuing the, the Suicide Squad and wants to take them out. Um, that bad guy then flees and meets up with King Shark. King Shark then walks out wearing the bad guy's necklace, and Deadshot says, Where did you... F how did you get that? And he goes, I found it! Which is pretty clear he ate the guy. Anyways, um, there's some good comedy in this, but at the same time, it's a very serious comic, and it really is a true bad guy comic, where it's bad guys being able to do their own things. The problem with bad guy comics is you have to make them look really good, and you have to do it consistently, but in doing that, what way makes a bad guy look good? killing superheroes is the major way you can do it other ways but it gets a little repetitive when they kill no names the great thing about the suicide squad is they're working for the government so they're doing the government's will and they're doing it in a very dark gringy underhanded way which is nice and the balance of the team isn't that bad we have deadshot on it which is a staple harley quinn which i still feel a little uneasy about her being on the team but she's there for kind of comical relief King Shark, who I was incredibly wary about, but he's actually pretty fun in this. And Captain Boomerang's jumping on. Um, in addition to that, El Diablo's on there, a character that I know nothing about, whether he's new to this comic or if he's been in the DC Universe before. But I really like his character, and I find him interesting. Particularly his power interesting, but his backstory is interesting too. Keep him on. Do not kill off this character. Well, at least you know he won't die. But anyways, uh, there's a good balance with this team and good members. I, I do wish Catman would show up because, well, he's Catman. But uh, I would like him to show up and, yeah, sure, bring Bane in. Because I know Bane was on The Secret Six. But uh, good characters in there, good action, and the, uh, the, the art, for the most part, is good. Uh, there's a few angles where the art is a little weird. And mostly with Harley Quinn, but... The art, for the most part, is good. Bad. Uh, first and foremost, let's talk about the uh, the elephant in the room. Uh, Harley Quinn's costume is just atrociously slutty. Um, sure, if you're a 14-year-old boy just hitting puberty, Harley Quinn's probably the best thing that has ever happened to you, next to the Catwoman comic. Uh, but, but um, yeah, it's just unnecessary. Harley Quinn can look very sexy and still look uh, respectable. Uh, the best costume to display this is the Arkham City costume, um, which isn't too, too much different, but the difference in the Arkham City costume is she's not wearing incredibly short panty shorts. She's wearing pants, and in the Arkham City costume, um, her cleavage isn't falling out of the actual... I don't know what that is. Girder tunic thingy shirt, I don't know, tube top. Uh, Harley Quinn's costume is just so not good at all. Uh, I don't like it one bit. Uh, so that's one bad. Another bad, and I, this is the silliest thing in the world, but Deadshot does not have his cool mustache. He needs to have his mustache because that's like a staple for him, at least for me. Uh, so that's kind of a, 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 at least one thing that ticks me off. Another thing that ticks me off is why is Amanda Waller really thin? I can live with it, but I liked Amanda Waller as a heavier set woman. Uh, because she was a strong character. She wasn't driven by her image. She was driven by her. And I think she also gave a uh, strong character who was of the heavier set that people who may be heavier can look towards and enjoy and relate. Um, I have a friend who is heavier and their body weight, and she knows it, and she loves Amanda Waller because she can relate to her in that sense. Uh, so I kind of wish Amanda Waller wasn't a skinny little toothpick. Uh, any other bad? Not really. This series on a whole surprised me. Uh, it was a uh, it's an enjoyable series. I can't compare it to Secret Six, but in saying that. Even though I didn't read Secret Six, it was still an enjoyable series. It was still fun, and it was still something that I might want to pick up. I'm going to have to look at what comics I'm picking up right now and might have to rearrange what I am getting to fit Suicide Squad in. 
but it is a good comic book series, and uh, I recommend it to anyone who enjoy these characters or just want something different. Um, there are problems, mind you, mainly Harley Quinn's costume and the lack of a mustache and Deadshot and Amanda Waller. But other than that, it's a good series. There's one last thing I want to say in this is uh, when they give the backstories for the characters, I like how much of the backstories are still uh, backstories from continuity. For example, Deadshot is where he is because he was captured by Batman. And if you uh, read any of the old Batman and the old detective stuff and the stuff that dealt with Deadshot, it was Batman who took him out originally. Uh, Harley Quinn, they make reference to her being Joker's girl and Joker not being around and all that junk. Uh, so they do good stuff with the backstory, give you uh, the information you need for these characters. With that said, Suicide Squad issue number one through three, it is a good series. It may not be for everyone, but I do recommend it. Um, if you want to try something new, something a little darker. Uh, I enjoyed the series. So I might pick it up in coming months. With that said, this is Andrew saying, peace out for now.